Hello everyone, and welcome back to Miko's Corner. I apologize for the delay in videos, I ran into some technical difficulties. But good news is, I have my PC finally built and up and running, so I can play some games I have been hanging on to for a very long time, thanks to Steam sales and Humble Bundles. Today, we will be playing one of my all-time favorite childhood games. It is called Titanic Adventure Out of Time. It's a nice point-and-click adventure with a little bit of action, mystery, and definitely suspense because at one point, if we all know our history very well, the Titanic hits an iceberg and sinks. This came out in 1997 or 98, I believe, which would make me five, six, seven years old. And today's top stories, I got stuck a lot. London has endured another night of German bombing. Most damage was concentrated in the East End. The RAF has struck enemy aerodromes in La Havre and the Low Countries. In Russia, further German losses are reported around Leningrad. In Asia, the American fortress at Corregidor is still defiant. But Japanese forces are reported nearing the Burmese oil fields. And that concludes the news summary. We now return you to our music program. So generally after I listen to the first news broadcast and maybe a little bit of this music, I switch to the other music because they're just going to repeat the news over and over and it gets a little annoying as you're exploring. But this is the music that we will listen to a lot once we were on the Titanic. It's a WASD and mouse clicker adventure game. Oh, someone's at my door. About time you're awake. You're two weeks late with the bed. Ah, the landlady. cockroach. Yeah, there's nothing really in here. Can get the landlady to talk to us again. You can either click the door to open or you can also use spacebar. It's going to be very difficult playing this game and not commenting or saying the lines with the characters. Nazi bombers hit city. Heavy damage in Docklands. Japs near Burma oil fields. If you couldn't tell, we are in London. As the news lady said, and our landlady speaks in that lovely, I think it's a Cockney accent? One thing I didn't look at here was his memory book. The Daily Standard, London, April 16th, 1912. The Titanic sinks. 1,250 people perish. RMS Titanic sinks four hours after striking iceberg. I saw it go down, the story of one man's survival. No word yet on the Astors. The family of Astors, they were a very rich family on board. A first-hand account. The first news of the disaster to the Titanic was received by the Maroni? Marconi? I don't know, it's very small on my screen and I'm kind of far away, so apologies for that. And there are certain things that you can interact with that trigger the next moment. So I'm going to try and look at everything else first. Futility by Morgan Robertson. The Times. Lord and Lady Lambeth. I'm sorry, Lambeth. April 19th, 1912. Obituary. Lord and Lady Lambeth have died in the Titanic disaster. The couple has been missing since the sinking and were not among the survivors rescued by the Carpathia, Carpathia last Monday. Many of the rescued attest to seeing the couple together before the, sink, the ship sank. The White Star Line will continue... Sorry, I'm having trouble reading today. 
The white star line will confirm only that the Lambeths were passengers on the ocean liner. There were no children. Lady Lambeth was the daughter of the late Duke of Norwich. She... something the most lavish. And then famous down there. Uh, we'll find out later that our main player character uh, is an agent. Uh, for Scotland Yard, I think? And uh, he knew Lady Lambeth personally. I believe they had a romantic relationship at some point, but as you can see, she got married. Okay, I think the thing to look at last is the timepiece. XII La Morte. That is a playing card. Random ad. Some postcards. We got pigs. Nope. Postcard 1129 19 New York. Heard you're back from France. Hope you'll even the score. Yet with the bastards who fired you. Uh, sorry to bring it up, but I think you were treated horribly. No references, no pension. What will you do next? Keep me posted. Jack. And no, this isn't Jack from the movie. The James Cameron movie with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet. It's a different kind of Jack. Yeah, uh, I sent it to London. My last name is Carson, I believe. There is another card here of the Taj Mahal. Pretty cool. I always thought this looked like he was toasting a marshmallow, <laughs> but it looks like he's just pouring some tea. Oh, not bad. Got some lovely magazines here. Air Corps Debs, Fly Girl Kristen Harder, Peak. March 8th, 1942. Brave New World. Frontiers of Science and New Technology. Newest in English aircraft. Blueprints are making history. Hinden yeah, Hindenburg. Ticket. From Frankfurt to Lakehurst. May 3rd, 1937. Price was $403 tax. Not sure what currency that would be in, though. Probably whatever Germany was at the time. 10 August, 1914. His Majesty's government regrets to inform you that your services in the office of the Secret Service are no longer needed. Termination to be effective immediately. With regrets, Commander T.S.D. Hippel. And our timepiece. See here. This isn't about your dedication. Pringle certainly attests to your loyalty. No, your dismissal stems from the Titanic mission. That failure can no longer be ignored. Especially now. I am sorry. But someone must shoulder the blame. The service, you understand. We can't be held responsible. Well, that's just mean. Sorry, I just need to set something up real quick. Make things a little easier moving forward. Alright. So one cool thing. You know how in most games there's uh, scripted events and things that have to happen in a certain way? This one has this here right at the beginning. Oh! It's a klaxon. An air horn. Bomb. So if I move away from this window, if my back is to it, it's going to pull me back too. See? And then, wa-boom. This is my favorite music and opening to anything ever. The past, forever locked in regret. 
But what if the past could be changed? Thirty years have come and gone since the night that saw the end of the world, my world. The service needed someone on the Titanic. They chose me. I was to wait for a signal from my contact. So, I remained in my cabin. I left only once Georgia was on board. And that's when it came. There'd be no second chance. It was Sunday, April 14th. Too late, you see, for the Titanic, for me. What if I'd met with my contact, prevented disaster? What if the past could be changed? What then? So cool. And that was where you had to switch from one CD to the second one to finish the game off. I don't know why... Oh, I know why they put... So that prologue section from the future at this point was put on the first CD because there was also a tour option. Good evening. I am Smedles, your steward. And, if I may say so... Oh, I forgot to put on captions. It is good to see you up and about. You've been in your cabin the whole voyage. A touch of the mal de mer, was it? What's mal de mer? Yes, just a touch. He'll tell us what it is in just a second. Seasickness can be quite unpleasant. There you go. Especially if it's one's first crossing. Since you haven't been out of your cabin... May I instruct you on how to get assistance while on board the Titanic? I personally don't need help, but for anyone who hasn't played this game, I'm going to click yes. So if you decide to buy this game on Steam, I believe it's $5.99. Uh, so it's very cheap for a very decent game. I mean, I really enjoy it. Hopefully you do too, either watching it me. Sorry, either watching me play it or playing it on your own, because there are multiple endings. Very good. We of the White Star Line hope that your stay on board Titanic is as relaxing as possible. As you explore the ship, please bear in mind the following advice. The mouse is your hands, the keys your feet. If you find the screen too dark or too bright, follow the directions on the control screen help panel or consult your manual on adjusting your monitor. To find the control panel help and other features, click on the life preserver at the bottom of the screen. The control panel has a help button, mm. as well as a quit and save game Seems feature. To be cutting out you may a also adjust the volume. Test the settings by clicking on the black knob. You may also switch the theme music on or off. After making any adjustments, click OK to return to your current game. Wandering the ship, if you notice a hand, it indicates something to click on. May I suggest you do so? Several personal items in your room, a brown satchel and a pocket watch, are quite useful to you during your voyage. Take them with you. You shall want to converse with other passengers. If you fail to understand them, click on their face. They will repeat their last sentence. The purser. His office is on sea deck, just off the forward grand stairs. The elevator, or lift as we call it, <laughs> has an attendant who can direct you to various sections of the... The lifts are located behind the forward grand staircase. Lastly, you may always find me by returning to your cabin, C-73, and ringing the bell to the right of the door. Your correspondence. 2,200 on board, and they all want messages delivered promptly. Even if it is 1912, and the Titanic, the most advanced means of sea conveyance ever devised, I still have only two hands. Meet me by the electric camel, now. 2,200 on board. And they... Here, a map of the ship for Yay. you. Yay! Compliments of the White Star Line. Thank you. 
I have taken the liberty of indicating your cabin. That's very C-73. helpful. Of course, on a Sunday evening at this hour, there won't be many people out. Will there be anything else? Who is PP? A young lady. A most insistent young lady. She's awesome. I love her. The electric camel. An exercise device. They say it is good for the liver. I wouldn't know. <laughs> it's located in the gymnasium, on the boat deck, on the starboard side. That's the right side, in case you had not been informed. Yeah, I had no idea as a kid what was port and starboard at the time. Uh... Most certainly, remember the term forward. It means towards front. the front, or bow. Or the term aft refers the to the back. Titanic's back, or Where the stern. Ass? Have you unpacked? You'll find your trunk key in your bag on the bed. And remember your personal effects, your watch and bag. If you require additional assistance, please ring the bell by the door. Will Good do. Night. Good night. My god, he can talk forever. I really shouldn't have clicked. I needed help. I apologize, everyone. Alright, first order of business, let's turn on the subtitles. Before I leave my cabin, I'm actually going to save, but I want to collect my items first. And look around a bit. If you can't get into room, it'll be yellow and it'll do a clicky noise like that. Meet me tonight on deck. Tell no one. Georgia. Georgia was on board. <gasps> we'll get to meet her. just randomly turn on the water, no big deal. Nothing else. Menu. Do you want me to read all this? April 14th, 1912. Hors d'oeuvres, berry, oysters. Consomme, Olga, cream of barley, salmon. Uh, mousseline sauce, cucumber. Filet mignon, lily. Saute of chicken, mayonnaise. Vegetable marrow farce. Far farces? Farce? I'm not super great with languages, guys. I took French in middle school and then I was dumb and took Chinese in high school. I should have stuck with French. I took Chinese because it was closest to Japanese. <laughs> okay, sorry. Lamb meat sauce, roast duckling, applesauce, sirloin of beef, chateau po potatoes, green peas, cream carrots, boiled rice. Parmentia and boiled new potatoes. Punch romaine. Roast squab. Whatever that is. Cold asparagus vinaigrette. Pate de foie gras. I know that one. Celery. Waldorf pudding. Peaches in char chartreuse jelly. Chocolate and vanilla eclairs. And French ice cream. Ooh. That sounds like a decent meal. That just takes me around the table. Alright, first order of business. We are going to look in our bag for our key. You can click it and you can look at it if need be. Tell you it's a steamer trunk key. And so long as it's actually glowing like that, you pull it out, it's right there. And use it to open your trunk. And look, it's a gramophone. Majesty's government has assigned an agent of the Crown to rendezvous with you on board the Titanic. Remain in your cabin until your contact gives you further instructions. After completion of all your assignments on board, book passage to remain on the ship and return to Southampton for your next assignment. For a more in-depth report of the international situation in the spring of 1912, Please review the white paper included as part of this briefing. That is all. His Majesty. Hmm, I thought there was something in there. Ooh. 
1912, that's between World War I and World War II, if I recall correctly. Which is why it says Austria-Hungary. Secret report. The Central Powers. German Empire, Austro-Hungarian Empire. Neutral is the United States. Britain's allies are France and Russia, which is why they were red in that map earlier. Whitehall, London, 3312. The spring of 1912, Europe is the dominant center of the civilized world, bursting with energy and power. It is also a house of cards. Cobbled together by diplomats and old dynasties at the Congress of Vienna in 1815 to restore order after the devastating Napoleonic Wars, this structure of nation-states has endured for nearly a century. But rumbling subterranean faults threaten to plunge all we have built into the abyss of mechanized global war. Despite such dangers, English liberals, intellectuals, and progressive businessmen choose to believe the sanguine writer Norman Angle. His book, The Great Illusion, has become a publishing phenomenon, electrifying the Oxford Oxbridge campuses with his postulate. War is unthinkable. A modern war would be terrible and so disruptive of the global economic system, he says, that both victor and vanquished, vanquished would be devastated. Global finance and economic interdependence is so great, he argues, that no nation will risk war. Nothing is further from the truth, as you shall read. In fact, peace toters on the brink, pushed near the edge by Europe's economic and colonial rivalries, and a system of competing alliances. The central powers of Germany and Austria-Hungary stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with a looser, more ambiguous association. The allies of the Triple Entente, and, yeah, comprising Great Britain, France, and Russia. Meanwhile, in the Balkans, the contending forces of Slav nationalism and great power expansion may well provide the fuel for a terrible inferno. There is hope, however. London politicians may be pessimists, but Britannia still rules the waves, and trade, and banking, and the realm of ordained self-confidence. Our vast overseas empire stretches from Suez to Cape Town, from Persia to Burma, in treaty, two treaty ports in China. We are linked by language, culture, and commerce with the United States, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Our chief rival is Germany. Her leader, the Kaiser, has doubled her army since 1892 and races to build a navy to rival the British fleet. Germany's trade policies, tariffs, enlightened social welfare services, and large, dynamic, well-educated labor force now boast an efficient, modern industrial system that outbids and undersells Britain around the world. To secure her position, Germany forged military alliances with Austria-Hungary in 1879. The result? These central powers now dominate continental Europe. Desperate for allies, Republican France has swallowed her principles, clasped the hand of the weak but autocratic Tsar, loaned Russia millions of francs to keep the inept, corrupt government afloat, and invested heavily in Russian industry, railroads, and expansion across Siberia to Asia. Every European power wants Asian, Asian markets, and Russia especially covets warm water ports on the Pacific. Generally, Britain has stood apart, but we have repeatedly foiled Russia's efforts to get across the, to the Mediterranean Sea, and we will continue to do so. This Franco-Russian alliance has increased German paranoia and insecurity. The Kaiser shouts foul, feeling isolated and encircled, but in fact, Russia is a lumbering behemoth. Our intelligence reports it our intelligence reports it is shackled by corruption, inefficiency, and an inept autocrat. Escalating scandals swirl around the German-born uh, Sarina Alexandria and the mystic monk Rasputin, 
who seems to ease her son's hemophilia with his psychic powers. Impotent Bolsheviks dream of revolution but achieve little. Many have taken refuge in Austria and Germany. Always eager to create mischief for the Tsar, the Central Power State Security both welcomes and encourages the Bolsheviks in the hopes they will overthrow the Tsar. Germany is spoiling for conquest. Some insignificant African territories fly the German Kaiser's flag, as do a few ports in China and some Pacific Islands. But the American open-door policy to China and its Pacific fleet limits further German aspirations. Thus foiled by Asia, the Kaiser has paraded his gunboats in Morocco. But we and the French were there first and faced him down with a combination of guns and diplomacy. He has retreated in a fury, but now makes plans for a Berlin to Baghdad railway to open the Middle East to German trade and influence. In the face of German provocation, we have taken pains to cement our relationship to the French. Eight years ago, in 1904, they signed the Entente Cordiale, a friendly agreement. France acknowledges Britain's prevailing influence in Egypt. Britain gives her blessing to French control of Morocco and our navies now share military maneuvers. France has also nudged us into a similarly loose accord with Russia. In 1907, we signed an Anglo-Russian convention that formalizes our separate spheres of influence in Persia and eases our historic conflict over the Crimea. We still refuse to make military commitments, but the European House of Cards is now divided between the Allies and the Central Powers. Yeah, you guys weren't expecting a history lesson in this, were ya? I don't think I ever read this as a kid. I saw how long it was and I was like, nope. And I pieced out. I probably wouldn't have gotten it either. Moving on, though. In Austria-Hungary, the dotering old emperor Franz Josef has sat on the throne since 1850. His is an empire of heterogeneous people ruled by an incompetent bureaucracy and gross inequality. Intelligence reports that he is a dull fellow, old-fashioned and conservative. He tends to the elaborate rituals of the Habsburg court, works long days like an assiduous clerk, and rules over an explosive mix of Germans, Hungarians, Czechs, Poles, Italians, Slovenians, Slovenes, Romanians, Serbs, Croatians, Bosnians, and Jews. Conflicts rage over language restrictions and economic discriminations based on nationality and the competing religious loyalties of Roman Catholics, Orthodox Christians, and Muslim Slavs. 400 years of Ottoman rule has left its mark on the region. Many wish it back. As Emperor Franz Josef dithers and society waltzes to Strauss and amuses itself with the novel theories of the mind doctor, Sigmund Freud, the Balkans threaten to explode with Serbia as the flashpoint. In 1908, young Turk military officers rose in revolt against the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire. In the breach, Austria a annexed the old Turkish provinces of Bosnia Herzegovina, Herzegovina, Herzegovina the annexation infuriates Serbia, which wants Bosnia as part of a greater Serbia, and the Russians to see themselves as mentors for those, their Slav brothers, the Serbs. It has also spurred Bulgaria to declare independence. These actions have inflamed further nationalist aspirations which led to last year's Balkan War, when Bulgaria, Serbia, and Greece joined forces against Turkey. Today, terrorism flourishes. Just this year, a Bosnian student, a member of a Greater Serbia secret society, tried to assassinate the Hungarian governor of Croatia. Properly financed and directed Serbian nationalist movements could create a serious international crisis. Last page. Lastly, though it still adheres to neutrality, the United States is a major force in the Pacific seeing herself as China's protector. Washington does face a potential problem with Mexico. The revolution there has unleashed a tiger. The new Madero government has failed to halt corruption and spur reform, and rebel leaders are staging armed raids against it. 
There is fear in Washington that such unrest may spill over onto American soil. Events, if manipulated, could easily direct the anger of the Mexican masses towards the U.S. Such an, event, such an event would delight the central powers, which prefer the U.S. stay out of Europe's affairs, especially as tensions escalate here. A United States, preoc a United States preoccupied with Mexico would offer no help to Britain and France if we went to war with the German and Austro-Hungarian empires. As the players line up toe-to-toe, -to -toe, their armies are poised to defend both national honor and questionable allies, while their presses rave at a fever pitch. All that is needed is one key event to plunge Europe into war. The world watches to see which side will blink first. For nearly a century, someone always has. So aside from the history lesson that we just got, and, uh, the background information of this whole situation here. What we need to take away, I believe, is this line. All that is needed is one key event to plunge Europe into war. May not actually be true in reality, but in the senses of the game, that line is important. I would say why, but I know what's gonna happen, so I really don't wanna spoil it for you guys. Is that all there was? It was a secret report. And down here we have something I can't use yet. It is a decoding machine. Or an encoding machine, whichever. Alright, let me take a drink of water. Put that key away. Take a look at the map. Then we will save and move out of our room. our map. Our cabin is here. And the interesting thing about going down these hallways, you always go by threes, I think? I don't know. It makes you go by the, the hallways quicker. So if you go down one aisle, we're in, what, C-73? So this is the odd cabin numbers. These are the even ones. It's currently 9.30. With each event um, in the game, usually indicated by a side view or front view of the Titanic moving through the water, time advances. So that second hand clock, or the second hand, is going to move around for the longest time, and we're going to stay at 9.30 until I hit that moment. So, I did read something about saving games being a bit weird. Hopefully I won't have that issue. Okay. There it is. Hopefully that works later on. Here we go. Grand staircase is to our right. So see, we go down and now it's C69, whereas mine was 73. And if we cross over here, we're going to get the uh, even numbers. The oft grand staircase. There are a bunch of people. Oh, wait, you're actually a dude I can talk to. Trasker, I believe. So there are some guys that are not this well defined. A fine night to be indoors, cold as the dickens outside. Cold but clear. Uh, who are Tim you? Isabel and the stars. Oh, you should see a million stars in God's firmament. A congregation of light. The name's Trout. Trout. The Reverend Edgar. I'm returning from a mission in Africa. To Sunapee, New Hampshire. <laughs> where we... I mean, I live. Emily, my wife. 
she's dead. I forgot that he was in New Hampshire. I'm in Maine, so that's kind of funny. Thank you. We had looked forward to this journey. But she died at Port Sahid, though it was Nyasaland that killed her. The doctors, you know, never did find all the parasites. We've just ended a hymn sing in the second class lounge. It's the Titanic's first Sunday afloat. Uh, hope it won't be the last one. <laughs> what did you sing? <laughs> For all those in peril on the sea. That's... Tell me, are you religious? 1912. Or 14. 1914, right? Perhaps. Do not forget God, and do not collude with the godless. There are many on this sh Leyland Trask, for example. A seer. A clairvoyant. He claims the most outrageous blasphemy. Remember, that which does not come from God is not of God. Wait, before you leave, I was wondering, perhaps you'd care to make a donation to our mission in Nyasaland? Uh... I don't remember how this affects things, but I'll say I yes. I'm very happy. I shall call upon you tomorrow to discuss it. Keeping a good relationship is always a good idea in these games, though. Oh, crap! We've already hit our first, uh... Time change. Well, okay, maybe not. It's still 9.30. But, uh, those, those little scenes... Okay. So... Not everyone is as well-defined as him. And sometimes you find people in different locations. So... I'm just roaming about right now because sometimes you can catch things... ...that don't... ...belong, that you can pick up. Help. Was he there before? Because he just scared the heck out of me, man. I it is not correct form to speak to those who have not been introduced. Dude, Good don't night. be a dick. What's weird is that they follow you, so if I go over here, he's now looking at me. Alright, so these are the dudes that are uh, very well defined and have been voiced, animated, etc. There are moments in this game that actually spook me. Um, because they take me off guard or there's like some creepy music. Okay, so these guys. They'll turn to look at you if you click and hold, but they won't talk to you. See? Same with these guys. However, so like him, if you look at her, she looks different and more well-defined. Let's talk to her. I don't know you, nor do I want to. Leave me or I shall summon a steward. Uh, excuse me? If you want to be a boar, I suggest you travel steerage. Wow. Good evening. What a jerk. You'll find out more about her later. Hey, man. Good evening, mon ami. Buick Riviera welcomes you to the tables. You look familiar. We make a meeting before. Dovi, the casino at Monaco, New Mexico. I lived there once, in Diamondback. Such a town. So, have we met? Man, he's been all over. Um, let's say the hard drive saloon. Because why not? Then we shall use my special cards. Oh, special cards. Do you play blackjack? Yay! Alright, show my card. This has no bearing right now. Uh, 7 and 5 is 12. Hit. Bust. Shoot. He had 20 anyways. Uh, I have one as you see. Je regret. You like to play again? I think their accents are also pretty good, honestly. The animation is very decent. At least for the time. I mean, it was 1997 on PC. Let's try to hear what he says when I win. 
Seven. I swear if it's a five again, that'd be hilarious. Uh, thirteen. Sixteen. Bust. Shoot. <laughs> Trademark laugh. I win. Another hand, <laughs> one I mean. That's hilarious. Oh my gosh. Uh, nine. Or oh, wait, uh, nineteen. Oh, dealer wins. It is a draw, mon ami. Technically, like dealer wins and draws, though. Yeah. One more time. This is more bearing later on in the game. Oh, 15. He could have anything under there, though. Small. Shoot. 12, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Buick. The cards. They, they played well. well. I win. Another hand, mon ami? Just, I, mm, last one, I promise. Okay, so the other reason that woman was being a jerk is that you're also a man on this ship, and it's 1914 or whatever it was. Okay, fine. We'll I'm stop. afraid fate is not with you tonight. At least it is I fairly win. randomized what he says, Again? though. Nah. Good night. Thank you, though. It is a little weird the music stops, though. Alright. A deck. First class lounge. Nothing down here. Yes. Whoa. The lounge is closed for the night. Sorry, Smithers. We'd open it again only in an emergency, which we are not experiencing at the moment. Why would you say an emergency? Good night. Do you, are you expecting something to happen on this ship? I am the one who's from the future. Dude! 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 You're a dude I can talk to. I know who you are. You're Max, I think? Uh. Hi, dude. Usually he yells at me as I'm passing. Riviera broke me. Damned Frenchman. <laughs> what do you want? Whoa, calm down, brah. Oh, I have to get to the gymnasium first. Health nut, are you? It's on the boat deck. Above us. Thank you. Yeah, it's a night, all right. A regular night to remember. I think it's because I'm doing things out of order. I went to go see Buick Riviera. Um. I think. Oh, Georgia's not here. Sorry, uh, I need to go see. Uh, Hey, it's the captain. Can't talk to you. Thank you. Good evening, Third Officer Morrow here. He's still the am captain, sorry, right? But this is the officer's promenade. No passengers allowed. You're the second passenger tonight who's been here. Really? The young woman tried to enter the wireless room earlier. Such cheek. I wonder if it was the other agent. Regulations ah. forbid passengers from entering the wireless. So what room. if she's a suffragette? Now, good night. Okay. Fine, I clearly can't talk to you right now. I could try to go to the bridge. He's gonna get it. Sorry, no passengers See? on the bridge. No passengers allowed. Calm down. There's the wireless. Alright. Jim should be not there. Why am I having trouble? This is the other problem. You get lost super easy in this game. Here we go. Gymnasium. Sorry. Okay. Apparently that is the electric can- uh, Okay, so basically it's an electric bike. Don't talk to her yet. I wanna look at the weird stuff. Or, no, that's the electric camel. What the heck is this thing, man? He said it's good for the liver. Okay. Weird.
What is that for? Man, gyms were weird. Those rowing machines. It is a rowing machine. Yep. I used to do that at school gyms and such. Glory be. It's about time. You're late. Hi, Penny Pringle. Another five minutes and I'd have cancelled your mission. Is it Penny Pringle? Uh, send me the card. Yes, I'm Pringle. Penny Pringle. From the Bureau of Secrets. You didn't think they'd plunk you down on this bucket of bolts and millionaires alone, did you? Uh, I am sorry for being late. Oh, up. Some idiot in the war office booked me into second, not first class. Oh, no. And I've had a fine time of it, too. The crew wouldn't let me in the first cabin at all. It's just today I located you. Yeah, it's been like a, oh, less than a week. Look at this. A German colonel named Zeitel. He's inspecting their embassies in Havana, Washington, and Mexico City. We know better. We met him! He was in the Persian cafe! Ten days ago, the Bureau got word that Zeitel has in his possession a priceless copy of the Rubaiyat of Omakai stolen two months ago in Paris after its purchase by a very highly placed member of His Majesty's government. Uh, what's the Rubaiyat? The Rubaiyat's a book, a collection of medieval Persian poetry, a passion of his lordship's. Poetry. Persians. The German High Command must think it's important enough to have their top man smuggle the lot on board. What's Zeitel going to do with it? It's your job to find out. Well, excuse me. His lordship's watching this very closely. Very closely indeed. I wouldn't fumble this chance either, unless you fancy spending the rest of your career in some grotty Midlands back office shuffling paper about. Um, is Zeitel no. traveling alone? He's with a protege, name of Hedelitz, I believe. The two spend a great deal of time in the Café Parisien. Hmm. Nibbling pastry. Get into the wireless room. I don't know or care how. Officer Morrow wouldn't let me in. See if Zeitel's received or sent any telegrams about the Rubai. You've got a cryptograph in your trunk. It'll unscramble the German codes. You use the brains God gave you. Watch people. Um, Listen. That when you find the Rubaiyat, knock on my door. The use use your brains what God gave you. That line was supposed to come after I choose a line. So there's clearly something wrong in the port, which is interesting because. A few years ago, I found this game on a website, um, so I could play it on there at the very least. You know, just keep the page open for the longest time until you finish the game. And I played it a few times because, you know, really old PC games don't uh, transfer well to newer ones. It's just hard to configure the settings and everything like that. But the website had a really good copy of this game. There were no glitches. The audio was perfectly fine. Sorry, Pringle. Um, so I find that interesting. And we'll see as we move along how much more I remember uh, and how much gets skipped over and glitched. Cabin F, 34. Use the second class stairs. You should be set. Remember, this is your big chance. Don't fail. I love her voice. She's such a great character. She is the other one, I believe, that they actually mark her cabin for me. There are certain sections through here, though, that, like, you get trapped, and you have to take the second class stair the stairs to get to her place. You can't come over here through this stairwell, because it's only to get to the Turkish bath or the third class cabins. Alright. Come out here. Max is gonna yell at me. Or am I? <gasps> it's Georgia. Why don't we talk to Georgia next time on the next episode of Miko's Corner? Thank you for joining me 
on this episode of Nico's Corner playing Titanic, the adventure out of time. I hope you're enjoying it. I know I certainly am. I'm having a grand old time. Don't forget to like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment if you feel like it. I'd love to chat with you guys. Subscribe, of course, and hit that bell so you know when I upload a new video. And hopefully I will get more into the practice of this and make it more of a routine. I'll see you next time.